Welcome. Today I'm doing something different from my normal Mass Effect 3 stuff. This is Matt Cat, the solo gamer, doing a review of One Piece Kaizo Komuzu, the import copy of the upcoming Pirate Warriors game in the Dynasty Warriors series based on the One Piece anime and Magna. And I do apologize that the audio is a little out of sync on some of these clips. I did my best to fix it, so. Anyway, let's get to it. Beat him up, Luffy. For those of you not familiar with the series, One Piece is an action comedy anime manga series that really does stand out among the crowd. Similar to Naruto, but with a much different backdrop and theme, theme this game takes that anime series and converts it into the Dynasty Warrior style of gameplay, and actually does an, ex an exceedingly good job. The music style and uh, visuals work well, and the action is fast-paced and fun. But we'll get to all of that. The real question is, does this game deserve your time? If you're a One Feast fan or not a One Feast fan, is it worth looking into? For the note, for those who aren't uh, into Japanese, there is an English version coming out in November. So let's get started with the story here. Any time now. Yes, we know. Story, come on! There we go. The story of One Piece is, well, it's kind of unique. At one point in the past, a pirate lord named Gold Roger, or actually Gold D. Roger, but, but basically he was captured and executed, but before his death, he announced that he had left all the treasure he ever collected in one piece, hence the name of the series. Luffy, like many others, who is this straw head little guy here, happens to be searching for it on his own, and the story of the first 200 something episodes are him essentially collecting friends and crewmates and going on adventures. Now, Luffy's not a bad guy, he's actually a good guy, he's just a little stupid. But for what he lacks in intelligence, Luffy is a weaponized rubber man. He is literally not only physically strong and completely determined, but he can stretch his arms and legs as if they were made of rubber, which allows him to, bo to more or less hit you from any direction, concentrate his attacks to be super swift and, and hit very hard, can inflate himself for defense, has hundreds of different techniques, and as a result of that allows him to really... He's a very interesting character in both terms of his personality and his actions. And the game more or less goes from the starting of his adventure to the death of his brother, and a little bit into the time script, but not much beyond that. But what really separates Luffy and company from other anime series that have been out lately is the general tone of it. It's lighthearted, it's very fun. There are serious moments, like you don't ever tick off Luffy and you don't ever hurt his friends, or else you will, oh, you will know pain. As you'll see later on, but but Luffy in the, in the beginning is a fun character who slowly becomes more serious as time goes on. And his story is an interesting one, if you can follow it. Now, on to the gameplay side of things. Which is really where this game is sort of, you know, both a mix of old and new ideas for the Omega Force team. This being based on the Dynasty Warriors engine, but using the One Piece world as its backdrop, means it had to do something unique. And it did. In the course of the game, you play the two things. You play these types of events, which are the quick time events, mostly for boss battles and uh, certain special events and, and levels. And you also play the stuff you saw earlier, where you run around pummeling bad guys and collecting treasures and navigating platforms and stuff like that. The game has an interesting and unusual mix of platforming, action game material, and quick time and cinematic events that are really well balanced. And sort of, you know, give every major event, with a few exceptions, you know, their due. For example, they do skip Skypiea. 
which I was sort of sad about because that's one of my favorites, but I know that having Skypean would have meant like a hundred more characters had to be added to the game. <laughs> But the game really does sort of balance out the story mode, the action mode, the RPG elements that are legendary in the series. For example, you have sim acts like this, the collapse of Arlong Park. You do have, you know, sim acts where you see characters going through their own personal grievances and issues. And you have the RPG elements where you collect tokens and other items that give you strength boosts, ability boosts, and can be combined together if, you're, if you know how. Where you can combine certain sets together and get bonuses out of them as a result. Excuse me. Now, as you can no doubt notice, I'm collecting stuff here and... There is a collect-a-thon aspect of this game, but it's actually not onerous. They're very simple items to understand and manipulate. And as you and as you start messing around with them, you quickly learn how they work. Plus, those items you choose not to keep are sold for experience, so they help you level up too. Now, among the graphics and sound areas, this game is an interesting mix because it's got great graphics in my opinion but they're unique because they use the visual style from the anime and manga and as a result tend to stand out they're not quite cell shaded but they're also not cartoony they're like a strange mix yep you're not going anywhere Lucci. the music as you can probably hear in the background is energetic intense and at times can be both very serious other times can be lighthearted and fun the game really tries to set a tone appropriate to whatever level you're in and whatever the situation is. So when you're beating up the comic bad guys like Buggy, it's humorous and funny. When you're fighting the evil CP9, it's serious and dangerous. The voice work is okay if you understand Japanese or can muddle through it like I can. But for those of you who can't, I would probably recommend holding off and getting the American version when it hits shores. Still, an excellent game overall so far in terms of presentation. Now moving on to the final verdict. Verdict, and this is where I'll cover other features that the game offers as well. The game does include multiplayer online and local. It has bonus levels where you can play as other characters, leveling them up and mastering their techniques. And you can replay any level you've completed to get more tokens, try different tactics, or just use a powered up character like mine to blaze through the levels in record times. The game is a fun, energetic beat-em-up crossed with the Dynasty Warriors hack and slash style using the One Piece universe as its backdrop. And I must admit, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I am a One Piece fan, but even if you're not, once the English version comes out, and hopefully Funimation does a good job with it like they did with the uh, Naruto series, once they figured out some of the quirks on that show, I'm hoping that with this series, when they bring it out to America, it'll have both good voice acting and they'll keep the original music and sound effects. That being said, One Piece is undoubtedly an interesting series, and One Piece Kaizuko Muzu is a great game that the, that the series should be proud of. The series has had other games, fighting games and action games and what have you, but this is the first game I really feel sort of captures the, the sort of manic and fun tone that the series has without jeopardizing the more serious moments to the comedic effect. Luffy is just as scatterbrained and stupid as he is in the show, but his positive traits, his loyalty, his friendship, his power and his ability really shine through. Each character is given their own moment in the spotlight and you will find that all your favorites are more or less included with only a few exceptions. Now, in the end, this game is a game that will be probably a rental for people who aren't One Piece fans and once you've rented it you might be convinced to buy it. For One Piece fans, I recommend getting it. Either wait for the American release, or if you know Japanese, import it from PlayAsia or another import site. 
the PS3 version, which is the only version I'm aware of at this time, works on an American PS3s, so you shouldn't have any problem playing it. Overall, I highly recommend it, and definitely say you should get it any way you can, and if you can pick it up on import, do so, otherwise, wait for November and pick it up when it hits store shelves. Enjoy, folks.